Welcome to On Deck in the Desert. Over the next 60 minutes, we'll cover a whole lot of ground with the Mariners leading up to opening day. New faces, an AOS preview, and I'll sit down with President Jerry DePoto and owner John Stanton. I'm Jake Garcia. I'll have stories on off-season acquisitions to Oscar Hernandez and Colton Wong, along with a look ahead to this summer's All-Star Game right here in Seattle. And I'm Chris Egan. I'll deal with the Mariners pitching staff, good vibes with Gino Suarez, and a new and improved Jared Kelnick. But we'll start with Julio Rodriguez. Last year, he was just trying to make the team. Now, he is the face of the franchise. Are you ready? Are you ready? I see. He means a lot, not just to the organization, but I think uh, the whole city of Seattle and then Major League Baseball. I think he's one of the, the, the young, bright, rising stars in the game. Um, you know, just the way he plays. He's got everything you are looking for in a ball player on the field, but he's kind of got that, that sixth tool, uh, that intangible. He's got the it factor, whatever you want to call it. He just loves playing baseball. He's easy guy to root for. He's always got a smile on his face, and he comes to play every day. In 2022, Julio Rodriguez had a lot of reasons to smile. He was an all-star, a home run derby runner-up, and rookie of the year. I am Julio Rodriguez. Are you ready? There was definitely a lot of things that I didn't think about. I feel like my whole approach a year ago, I can definitely tell you, it would just basically do the, uh, do the best that I can in my preparation and then let everything just take over from that. Rodriguez became just the third rookie in Major League history with at least 25 home runs and 25 stolen bases. But he was also the last Mariners player to get out during an 18-inning Game 3 playoff loss to the Astros. I mean, obviously I was sad about it, but I feel like that also like brings a lot of motivation, you know. I feel like you can, you can avoid it and try to forget about it, or you can like also learn and try to take something from it. And I just feel like that whole situation, that whole basically loss, against the Astros, I feel like made this team strong. He's only 22 with just one major league season under his belt, but Rodriguez has already signed a contract extension that could pay him almost 500 million through the 2039 season, making him a Mariner for life. I just think it sends a great message to our team, to our fan base, that when we have a player like this, the goal is to have them spend their whole career with the Mariners in one uniform, and we can just watch and see what he can become, which really there are no limits. It can be anything, and that's really exciting for everybody. Joining Julio in the outfield is a fellow Dominican star. Teoscar Hernandez saw his season end at the hands of the Mariners, and now he's wearing their jersey. Seattle hopes its prized offseason target can bring some pop to the middle of their lineup. If you can't beat him, join him. Or some version of that for Teoscar Hernandez, who was traded to the Mariners after his team was beaten by the Mariners in the playoffs. It was through no fault of his own. Hernandez hit two home runs in game two with the Blue Jays facing elimination. It was a continuation of a four-year trend. Hernandez a thorn in the Mariners' side. Since 2018, he's hit 373 with three home runs at T-Mobile Park. The Mariners grateful he's now a thorn on their side true middle of the order bat, a damage doer. Um, and while you don't want to solely live and die with the homer, hitting a homer is good and he does a lot of that. I'm just excited we don't have to pitch to him anymore. <laughs> it didn't end very well. Hernandez is grateful he's comfortable in his new home. You can see the ball really good in the outfield. You can see the ball really good uh, hitting. Uh, it's going to be fun going there as a home team now. The admiration goes even deeper. Hernandez got an up-close look at last year's Mariners magic when Seattle overcame a seven-run deficit to stun Toronto. They never give up. And when you play until the last out, you play your ass off, it, it just, anything can happen. And, and that's what they showed last year. Teoscar says the November trade feels like a compliment. It feels like, uh, you're going to be part of that joy. And is eager to play a big role in helping his new team take the next step. For the last couple of years, they've been uh, doing some really, really good work here. And I'm excited. Uh, the group that, that we have now is, is, is pretty good. And I think we, we're going to get far this year. Hernandez hit 57 home runs over his last two seasons. And he was selected to his first All-Star game in 2021. The man making all the moves for this team is President Jerry DePoto. We sat down and talked about a number of topics, including the importance of having a core group of young players who bring excitement to the game. 
This is the most engaged group of players that I've ever encountered in my baseball career. Their energy, their want to learn, they're super curious, they work their tails off, and these guys get after it every minute of the day, and it carries over into the regular season. It's as if they've never had a bad day, they never have a bad inning, and they are truly the goldfish who just forget what happened the day before, they learn the lesson, and they move on. For years, this team has kind of flown under the radar of a lot of teams. Yeah, all the success you had last year, now it seems like you're on everybody's radar when you come to town. How will that affect a young team like you have and the team that you have? You know, it's a great question, and it's part of why we went out and signed guys or brought in guys like Teoscar and Colton Wong, Tommy Listell, and A.J. Pollock, specifically those four. You know, between the four, they have, I think, 22 individual seasons having played for playoff clubs. A couple of them have World Series rings, and they've been down that road. And the hardest thing that you have to manage when you go into a season like this where you are now, it's essentially the hunted rather than the hunter, is you have to manage your own success. And with young players, the best way you can do that is surround them with veteran players who have been down that road. And roughly to keep them you know, level, to keep them on an even keel, not rising too high or too low, because it's baseball and you're still going to go through your offers and you're still going to go through your streaks, but you have to maintain that, that, you know, that down the straight and narrow like these guys can help you do. Every team is going to be on your schedule this year. Um, that means this team is probably going to travel as much or more than any other team in the Major League Baseball. How will that affect this team? I think it's refreshing that we'll get to see every team in baseball. The fun of going to a new ballpark, a new city that you don't visit every year. That being said, I do think that our players are they wear it as a badge of courage that they travel more miles than anyone. And it's usually not by a little, <laughs> it's by a lot. And now with as many as four trips to the East uh, annually as we open up to more of these teams, it's gonna be even more of a challenge. If you wear it as a challenge, we've overcome this, we can overcome anything. Our guys do treat it that way. And I think it becomes part of the toughness of our team. All right, another change in baseball is the, is the rules. Um, bigger bases, uh, the shift, and pitch clock. I love the pitch clock. It's keeping the fan engaged in as much as it's keeping the players moving. I think you are a better strike thrower if you're moving quickly. You know, the rhythm of your game calling as a catcher it moves better when the game's moving quickly. Your chance of making athletic plays happens more frequently when you're moving quickly. You know, couple that with the, the rules that now negate the shift. And I think you are challenged to find athletic players who can cover the middle. And it's part of the reason why we were, we were drawn toward Colton Wong, who's been one of the rangiest second basemen in baseball since he arrived in the big leagues. I read somewhere where your, your phone is constantly on, you never turn it off. Is that true? It is true. My wife doesn't love that part, but it is true. <laughs> all night? Yeah. It's, you know, all night during the season. You'll yeah. get the beeps and the burps. But, uh, you know, most people now through the years, I don't get a ton of phone calls after a certain hour in the evening. But during the season, the reason you keep it on is because you never know what kind of emergency is going to spring up when you have seven affiliates, you know, across the globe and scouts who are scouring the, the really – every nation on earth, it seems like. And, and you have to be available to them. That's part of the job. You were a big card collector back in the day, baseball cards. And was there a card that you cherished most back then? You know, so many favorites. You know, baseball cards, you know, like food is to me now, like, you know, baseball in general or music. You know, it, it reminds you of places and times that, you know, where you were in, in that moment. And, and it wasn't always the star player. It was sometimes about the, you know, the picture, like the 1976 Johnny Bench where he's standing in a cloud of dirt and, you know, the all-star logo in the bottom corner. I'll never forget that card. And I remember where I was when I first saw it, the 1977 Tom Seaver with the high leg kick. And I'll always remember the, the first iconic card that I ever uh, had was uh, my mom bought me a 1958 Mickey Mantle card for my 14th birthday. And it wasn't in great shape, and at that time it was a very affordable, you know, we'll call it beat up card. But it meant something to me many years later, and I thought about it a lot because that's, you know, that was a connection for my mom, like investing in something that she knew was important to me. Hey, Itro, grab a seat. Okay. I may joke around, but I really think it's great that we get a chance to play together. I agree. It really means a lot to me. Me too. By the way, I put glue on that chair. Of course you did. Mariners baseball. Believe big. Junior! How are we doing? All right. You ready for a big day? 
Coleman is with us today. The Mariners had a special guest at spring training this year. That is Coleman. As we make a wish, he spent the day with the team. Coleman has a rare eye cancer and thankfully has reached remission for a third time. He can't wait for the season to start. Just before the first pitch on Thursday night, Coleman will make the ceremonial run around the bases. When Coleman reaches home plate on Thursday night, he'll be standing in front of the catcher's box. Here's more on the Mariners catchers. Cal Raleigh led all Major League catchers last season with 27 home runs, while becoming one of the best behind the plate. He committed just three errors in the final four months of the season and was a gold glove finalist. It's the most important thing to me. Um, you know, the, the hitting is great. It's, you want to be the best hitter you can be. You want to help impact your team any way you can. But at the end of the day, you know, my job is to help the pitchers to play solid defense, to hold the running game. Uh, that's the most important thing as a catcher. You know, you uh, get to be glove first, in my opinion. This season, Raleigh will have some help behind the plate with the return of Tom Murphy. Last season, Murphy played in just 14 games before he underwent season-ending shoulder surgery. Anytime you have something taken away from you, you realize how much you love it, and that's as, as simple as you can make it. And uh, you know, to come in here with all that pent-up energy from that time of watching baseball is, is a powerful tool. The 31-year-old Murphy has been playing in the majors since 2015. The Mariners value his leadership. When I talk to a pitcher, it's always from a sense of I have their best interest of their career in mind at all times. And for me, that's what's going to make the pitcher better than anybody I've ever caught is that they feel like I'm invested in them every single time. I'm, to develop that type of connection is what truly, I think, separates good teams from bad. You know, it's that type of leadership and connection that really goes uh, and makes, makes teams take it to the next level. Outfielder Jared Kelnick is a former first round pick and a former top three prospect who hasn't quite lived up to the hype yet, but he's young and he's still learning. And if this spring training is a sign of things to come, then Kelnick could be in store for a big year. You realize how hot they come in here? Come yeah, on now. No kidding. Here's Kelnick, a high drive, left center field. That baby's going to carry out. Oh, to the bird. J.K. with a home run his third of the season. Jared Kelnick has had a spring training to remember. He's been one of the hottest hitters in Cactus League play. The skills haven't gone away. They're still there. You just need to get to play out the big league level. You know, he's in great shape. Uh, his mind's in a good spot. Now you got to go out and do it. Um, I like where he's at, and, you know, uh, he's going to have a big year for us. I really believe that. Kelnick didn't spend much time resting during the offseason. He worked with coaches in California and Arizona. I've uh, just been trying to be a sponge, of being a student of the game, learn as much as I could just so that I could come into this season and help the, the ball club as much as I possibly can. The 23-year-old has revamped his swing and changed his approach at the plate. Kelnick says he feels much more comfortable. I look at what I've done in the big league so far is just a lack of information that I've had. This offseason I learned more than any offseason all combined. Uh, so I'm looking forward to just letting my, my ability take over and letting my ability speak for itself and not saying a whole lot. The Mariners will give Kelnick a chance to become an all-star in left field, but right now he's more concerned about chasing after a bigger prize. Last year we really wanted to get to the playoffs and hopefully get to the World Series and you know we, we lost in the playoffs and it sucked. So this year we're looking to, to go a lot further and hopefully be the last team to pop champagne. Like Kelnick, Evan White is still trying to live up to expectations. He was the Mariners' first round pick in 2017, signed a six-year contract extension in 2019, the team's opening day starter at first base in 2020, and a gold glove winner by the end of the year. But since that moment, White's played in just 30 big league games. A hip injury he can't quite seem to shake has taken some of the shine off his star. The injury was, was many years in the making, I feel like. And it's now taking many years to overcome. White says his discouragement came to a boiling point last year. I started, I think, three or four rehab assignments, I think four or five rehab assignments. By the third one, it's like, it's just, it's, it's very frustrating because, you know, you're, you're doing everything you can. It's like, okay, what's, what's wrong with me? What's, you know, what's the deal? Why can't I get back to just being able to stay healthy, be on the field? In November, White finally found the answer to that question. When I hear pelvic floor specialist, that's not what I ever would have or predicted that I would have had to, to work with. 40 miles from the Mariners spring training home, Dr. Tanya Bunner went to work. One of the things he just kept saying to me is, I just want to get back and play baseball. But first, White would need to tackle even the most basic movements. He had very sharp pain in his groin 
difficulty lifting his leg up, difficulty turning his leg in and out. The muscle in there called the obturator, that was my big issue. It was actually specifically here. And it created a lot of weaknesses and deficiencies and compensation patterns for many years. So kind of being able to untangle that and, and dive into that. From my perspective, it was a matter of kind of addressing the scar tissue that was in that area. Evan White is now five months into his visits with Bunner and the results have been promising. I was pleasantly surprised with how I felt after games and stuff like that, because you never truly know until you actually get on the field. He's got great hip mobility, and once the hip mobility is back to where it needs to be, then the whole system functions as a, as a well-conditioned unit. White now hoping to rediscover the baseball promise he once showed. Here's pitch swing on, hit the other way. I feel like I'm in a position now where everything's been corrected and uh, in a good spot to, to be the best version of myself. Hey, Gar, what's up? I had this idea for when we take late night batting practice. Let me show you. OK, let's see how this works. I'm ready. Cool, huh? Really cool. I like it. Mariners baseball. Hey, now. Get all of it. That's a problem. Well, the last time I checked, I mean, we played them three really good games. We're probably one swing of the bat away from winning all three of those games. They go on to win the World Series. They're a really good team, and they're not going anywhere. We're a really good team, we're not going anywhere. So uh, I say that, and our division's gotten better. We're not the only team that's gotten better. Uh, everybody has made some moves uh, to improve. So it'll be very competitive. Over the next four segments, we'll preview the AL West. Up first, the world champion Houston Astros. The only problem the Astros had in the offseason was in the front office. They fired the GM who helped build a title team, only to replace him with someone who incorporates a lot of analytics into the game. Dana Brown, who won a title with the Braves. The Astros lost Cy Young winner Justin Verlander to free agency, but still have a solid starting core with top prospect Hunter Brown expected to join the rotation at some point. Eight of Houston's 16 pitchers last year had ERAs under three, and the bullpen ranked first in ERA for the 2022 season. The offense will rank near the top of the league again with Jose Altuve, Alex Bregman, Kyle Tucker, Jordan Alvarez, and the addition of 2020 MVP Jose Abreu. The Astros will likely benefit from the new shift rules. They are a team that pulls the ball. I mean, to me, I mean, we're the world champs until the next world chance, and I'm hoping that's us too. Time for a look at the major rule changes this season. First up, the shift. The shift, where you can pack one side of the field with defenders, has been outlawed. This season, two infielders must be positioned on either side of second base when the pitch is released. All four infielders must have both feet on the infield dirt when the pitcher is on the rubber. We're to get the off middle infielder, right handed hitter, the second baseman, make as close as we can get to the middle of the field. So he'll be able to fill his ground balls over here for a right handed hitter. Or if it's barely hit on the other side, five or 10 feet, he's got a shot to get those two. His left handed hitter would be the same way. So we're, we're practicing on uh, what balls that JP could get to, what balls that Colton could get to. Wong is going into his 10th year in the majors, a career that started in St. Louis and started with tragedy his toughest moment on the field, right as he was experiencing his toughest moment off it. This was Colton Wong's introduction to a national audience. The only time in MLB history a World Series game has ended with a pickoff. Wong was devastated, not only because of what he did, but who he did it in front of. I didn't see her until the World Series that year. Colton's mom, Kiala, was watching her son play in the MLB for the first time. Colton said in the back of his mind, he knew it would be the last. Kind of had an idea. Um, she wasn't doing good. Kiala was fighting for her life. She had myosarcoma, which is basically cancer of the lymph nodes. And seeing just the amount of weight that she lost, you know, seeing her inability to move around and, and you know, be lovely and, lovely and, you know, bubbly as she always is. Colton said his World Series mistake was because his heart was somewhere else. I don't even think I was really, you know, embracing the moment of being in the World Series at that time, to be honest with you. On December 19th, 2013, Wong lost a piece of his heart. His mom passed away at 51. It took me a while to kind of get through dealing with the loss of my mom and, and dealing with, you know, adversity getting picked off and whatnot. But the very next year... I had a walk-off home run in the NLCS. As soon as I hit first base, man, you just knew, you know, like, she was there with me. 
Wong is now in his first season in Seattle, and he says his heart is healed. In fact, he wears part of it on his sleeve. So I had the little cancer band put in. A tattoo that inks the memory of his mom. Just kind of wanted something to remind me of her. A reminder of where he's been and how far he's come. My mom is, is always going to be with me. Wong came over in a trade during the offseason. He'll be Seattle's opening day starter at second base. Scott's service helped the Mariners end the 21-year playoff drought, but that wasn't his only big accomplishment last year. He was also named the third most handsome manager in the American League. Um, I know the coaching staff, when that came out, coaching staff gave him a pretty hard time about it. I this is the first time I've ever spoken on it. And so <laughs> I'll just say, you know, that, that's what a great honor and uh, happy to be working for the third best looking manager in the American League. According to Beauty Technology Analysis, which used a popular beauty measurement app, Scott Service scored a scorching 7.94 out of 10. I have no comment to that. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good because the trend is uh, the trend is more youthful coaching around. So the skiff's getting up in age. He's still keeping the silver fox going I mean, or something. We kind of looked at that. I'm not really sure who voted on stuff like that. <laughs> I don't know who's the first. Mets manager Buck Showalter took the number one spot. Whatever, okay. rig. The fact that Buck Showalter was number yeah. one with those pants is um, it's questionable. Come on, you can't go with this uh, one. A lot of guys Come on. on your team say they want to revote. They're not happy with it. <laughs> I think top five is pretty good. <laughs> Your thoughts on top five? No comment. No comment at all? Yeah, yeah. you will not get me to comment on that. <laughs> when we win the World Series this year, you'll be the best looking manager. Scott Service finished seventh overall for all of baseball. After Showalter, here are the other five ahead of service in the glamour department. Presenting El Rando Grando and his fearless assistant, Impelia. Aren't you glad he decided to pitch for the Mariners instead? The 2-2 two -two pitch, swag and a miss, and he's done it! Randy Johnson. The Angels will try to avoid this in 23. Mike Trout and Shohei Otani go 5 for 8 with two homers and seven RBI. Angels lose 11-7. They have two of the game's best players, and Anthony Rendon if he can stay healthy. They've beefed up the lineup with Hunter Renfro, Brandon Drury, and Gio Urshela, and they'll need it. Last season, the Angels had their lowest run output in 30 years, so there's a lot of work to be done. This is the starting rotation, one that was sixth in starter ERA last year, but succumbed to a below average bullpen. They add Tyler Anderson, who had a breakout season in 22, and could go with a six-man rotation. A few years ago, we drafted a lot of pitchers in the draft, and you know, it's uh, you know, them, them guys are coming up. You know, we got a lot of guys in, the, in, in obviously, in the, in the minor leagues that throw hard and, you know, uh, got some nasty stuff. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, we, got a, we got a good team, for sure. The Angels have had seven straight losing seasons. And if it goes south again, expect Otani to be dealt as he goes into his free agent season. As a two-way player, Shohei Otani has to pay attention to the new pitch clock as both a batter and a pitcher. Here are the basics to speed up the game. From the time he receives the ball, the pitcher has to throw within 15 seconds with the bases empty, or 20 seconds with runners on. If not, it's a ball. Alternatively, the batter has to be in the box and alert to the pitcher with eight seconds to go, or it's a called strike. Creating more action on the bases, you know, with the disengagement rules, the pitch clock, speeding up the game a little bit, is, those are good things. At the end of the day, we're in the entertainment business. We need the fans to come out not just support us, but enjoy watching the game, watching young players do their thing. So it should create more opportunity for that. Let's take a look at the Mariners' starting rotation that, aside from Castillo, were healthy all last season. The M's have plenty in reserve with some special arms in the minors. The Mariners not only have one of the most talented starting rotations, they also have one of the closest groups. And that's key during a season with plenty of ups and downs. 2-2 two -two pitch, swing and a miss. Seattle's starting rotation should be among the top five in baseball. Luis Castillo, Robbie Ray, George Kirby, and Logan Gilbert could all find their way into Cy Young conversations by season's end. They can all do different things. No two of them are alike. They're all really good. They're durable. They're competitive. They're strike throwers. They miss bats. Uh, they're good athletes. Um, it, it, you know, we're really blessed to have that kind of rotation. When you pitch that way, you have a chance to win every day. 
Castillo Ray and Marco Gonzalez have 26 years of combined experience in the majors and nearly 200 wins. Scott Service says the veterans have done a great job helping the young guns, Gilbert and Kirby. I mean, everybody's just trying to get better uh, in pushing each other. I think it, it's uh, it's it's healthy. It's how you grow. It's how you get better as a as a unit. I mean, we watch each other's bullpens. We try to pick up on little things here and there. It makes us better. That's what we try to do. We try to show the young guys that's what we're about, um, and hopefully that just makes us even closer. They not only help each other at practice in the pen, they're also very tight away from the diamond. I think that's just the culture that we've created. Um, I've been fortunate enough to just be a part of this kind of shaping of what we've done here. And we're a really close group. Uh, we watch each other uh, through all the bullpens, even during the season. Probably the closest staff I've ever been on, and we give each other a hard time in a good way, but that's how you know how close we are. You know, it's not just like show up and go pitch and do your job. It's also like, you know, these are some of my really good friends, and we're just playing the game we love with, uh, you know, really good friends. And that brings us to the ace of the staff. Last year, Luis Castillo dazzled in a way Mariners fans hadn't seen since Felix Hernandez. Castillo and I did a one-on-one -on -one interview in Spanish. We talked about the expectations he had when he first got to town and the one he now feels as Seattle's opening day starter. One, two, one, two. Luis Castillo's mic check with the Mariners was a mic drop by the end of the season. He came over in a blockbuster deal at the deadline and then led Seattle down the stretch to an ending that even Hollywood wouldn't have scripted. Castillo said he expects to take it a step further in his second season. I hope this year things go so perfectly that we don't simply make the playoffs, but we continue to advance in the playoffs even further than we did last year. Castillo said his first goal after the trade was to make a good impression, but wasn't too worried about it because of the success he had in Cincinnati. And it was more of that Cincinnati symmetry that helped ease the transition even further. I felt comfortable coming to Seattle because I already knew a Eugenio Suarez and Jesse Winker. Because of them, I felt I had a small place here and I was already comfortable with the family and now even more so. And speaking of family, he also broke down the origin story of his nickname, La Piedra, a nickname he was given before he was even born. My mom was pregnant with me, a few days away from giving birth. She was hurting a lot, but there's this cultural belief that goes back generations that my grandmother used on her. Whenever she was in a lot of pain, my grandmother would place pebbles on her head to make her feel better. That's what she did until they got to the doctor's office and I was born. It's a fitting nickname. Rock, piedra, rock. Castillo enters the 2023 season as the rock of the rotation. Armed with a fastball that ranked top 10 in baseball last year and a belief that his changeup can be the best. I asked Pedro Martinez for his opinion on how to locate my changeup. It's one of my best pitches. I can throw it in any count, in any situation, in any inning, to any batter. It's one of the pitches that I can count on for the rest of my career. The Mariners made a big money commitment to Castillo, and that starts at the top. I sat down with owner John Stanton, a man who loves the game of baseball. You know, first of all, I'm a fan. I love to sit close. I keep score at almost every game I go to, and I really enjoy it. And so part of being a fan is being close to the action and being able to see it. Part of it is having people realize that I'm committed to this team, that I'm a fan, that I want us to win, that I'm passionate about it. And I, I think that that my presence there sends a very positive message. I'm certainly passionately interested in what's going on, and I just love the game. I just, I'm kind of like the kid that grew up and got his biggest dream. You showed some patience with Scott and Jerry early on, and uh, you know, talk about the consistency that, and why it's so important to have consistency when it comes to leadership. Well, I think that the tendency in baseball, in general, uh, all teams is, if we lose a couple of years in a row, we've got to get a new manager in. And what I've learned is, you know, that new manager is going to bring in almost all new coaches, probably all new coaches. You bring in a new general manager, they're going to bring in all their own people or hire, recruit and hire their own people. And stability, I've found in business, is a very important part of success. And I think that that's what we have, and we're fortunate to have a group of folks particularly Scott and Jerry that work so well together. And I see the chemistry that they've got. I see the quality of judgments that they make. And I believe that that is a group that will take us to the World Series. When you look back at these Mariner games and, and pilot games,
games even. Do you have a favorite memory or something that maybe stands out back in the day? On August 31st, 1990, Junior and his father played baseball together for the first time. That was the day my older son was born. And so literally, you know, we didn't really fully appreciate it at the time. I, he was born at five o'clock in the afternoon and I was holding him in my arms as senior and junior ran out on the field and you know, played their game for the first time. You used to charter planes to get home in time to coach your son's games. And how, was that just a combination of love of family, love of baseball? For me, that was a great joy. If you're gonna make that commitment, you also have to make the commitment to be there, right? The, an awful lot of, uh, as Bill Gates Sr. used to say, uh, an awful lot of being a part of a family is showing up. Both of my boys were fortunate enough to play baseball all through college. Um, we went to an awful lot of games, uh, high school and college, particularly when the two of them were playing, you know, 75, 80 games a year. It was, uh, it was hard to get to all those games. You've been known to use uh, movie an analogies in the past to kind of um, base different things on in life. Uh, is there a favorite movie out there that you like to quote? My favorite movie of all times is Field of Dreams. You know, and it, my kids growing up, uh, uh, we watched all the baseball movies and memorized most of the dialogue. There were a couple that had less good dialogue. Movies like uh, uh, Major League, Major League Two, Major League Three. Um, uh, Even Bull, Major League Bull, Three? Bull Durham, yeah. Major <laughs> League Three, Back to the Minors with <laughs> Scott Bakula. Uh, uh, we, had, uh, we had a lot of fun with all of those. As part of their involvement in the community, the Mariners have joined forces with EL1 Sports to launch five training centers throughout the region. Seattle, Redmond, Woodenville, Puyallup, and Tacoma. The goal, to bring baseball and softball to more children and families in the Northwest with equal access to facilities and training for low-income youth. Baseball, uh, softball is one of the most expensive sports, and we know that. And, and we want to break down the borders and the barriers of programming and then really just access to the game. And so here we're going to provide services that allow families to really experience that instruction on the top level without having to break their pockets for it. The training centers will offer free camps, clinics, one-on-one -on -one lessons for beginners and beyond. Last March, EL1 was named the Youth Baseball and Softball really Training good. Partner of Major League Baseball. We thought that this was a perfect timing for us to come together and support all of the Mariners community initiatives, uh, the Hometown Nine, Baseball Beyond Borders, and blend our instruction and our infrastructure from the back end to really bring it to life. For more information, contact them at info at marinerstrainingcenter.com. Nice. Imagine that, the old Jamie Moyer changeup. You gonna swing at it? I don't know, it looks a little high. Looks pretty good to me. Hey, you try that new seafood place downtown? Quiet, man, I'm trying to concentrate. Oh man, you gotta swing at that. Told you. The Seattle Mariners. You gotta love these guys. Put a little something extra on that one. The Rangers committed big money to their offense last year, signing Marcus Semyon and Corey Seager. They were statistically better than the Mariners in nearly every offensive category, but lost seven one-run games to the ends. Like the Astros, Texas is a team that tries to pull the ball and should benefit from the new shift rules. Last year was about offense. This season, the Rangers went after pitching. They added Jacob DeGrom, Andrew Haney, and Nathan Ivaldi to the rotation that had a 4.63 ERA. Those are strong additions if they can stay off the injured list. All three have had health issues. We've raised the floor um, of talent in the organization and the options we have, and I think that we're excited to see how it plays out. Then there's the intangible. They hired Bruce Bochy as their manager, a proven winner and three-time World Series champ with the Giants. Our third and final major rule change is the size of the bags. Each base is now three inches bigger. That reduces the distance from home to first and third to home by three inches. The distance between first and second and second and third is four and a half inches. The bigger bags reduced injury near bases by more than 13% in the minors last season. What we did see is that there was fewer collisions um, around the base paths and way much fewer injuries around the base paths. Uh, with the larger bases, which is the main 
reason for that uh, rule change. The man on the third base bag is Gino Suarez. In one year, he's not only become a fan favorite, but his positive approach to life also makes him one of the favorites in the clubhouse. His swing is sweet, but Gino's attitude is even sweeter. Goodbye, Zanli. Gino is like always happy, always laughing, always having a good time. I mean, the big leagues is one of the most stressful things in the world at times. You know, it feels like it's just an immense amount of pressure all the time. Um, and then to have somebody come in and to reflect that that is not the case, that it's actually a blast to come out here and be able to play baseball every day is one of the most powerful things you can have on a team. And for him to have the voice and leadership that he came in with, um, it kind of set us apart. It really did. It gave us that, that leadership that we needed. I mean, that, that's me growing up, you know, I'm a happy guy. I, I always try to, to be happy and uh, just because it, this game is so hard. So you got to, I, I use that good vibes only just, you know, for me to tell everybody like that. Like, uh, this is just a game, you know, like we got to enjoy it. And that's what I did every day. But it's not just his good vibes only approach that the Mariners love. Suarez has belted more than 30 home runs in each of the past four seasons. Definitely I feel uh, way more better in the last two years and uh, I mean my comfort go higher but like I'll tell you I'm not chasing a name uh, number sorry and uh, I just try to be me and a games and uh, I just pray to be healthy and, and help the team uh, win more games this year. Last season Suarez played in 142 of the Mariners first 143 games before injuring a finger. He's become a very solid third baseman and he thanks infield coach Perry Hill for helping his development. Uh, I work every day with him and he helped me a lot and uh, you know our goal is, is you know be better every year. Goodbye Zanli. Gino was an all-star in 2018. The Mariners sent two players to last year's all-star game in Julio and Ty France and they hope the showing this year will be even better. The all-star game returns to Seattle for the first time since 2001. There is no better place to watch a baseball game than July at T-Mobile Park. That's about the only thing that hasn't changed in the 20 plus years it's been since Seattle last hosted an All-Star game. Mariners president of business operations, Katie Griggs says it's more than a game. Souvenir program and scorecard. It's now All-Star week. We really are looking to turn the stadium district here in Seattle into just a complete celebration of the sports of baseball and softball. The laundry list of events is now set. The HBCU Swingman Classic on Friday named in honor of Ken Griffey Jr. The Capital One play ballpark throughout the weekend at Lumen Field. The Futures game, the Celebrity Softball game, the MLB draft, and rumors of a red carpet experience at Pike Place Market. Grigg says it's taking a village to make it all come to life. This is a citywide and even region-wide event, and so it takes a lot of people coming together from public safety to transport, but also just the coordination of something at this scale and bringing everyone to the table. We're having regular site visits from Major League Baseball, working with the Mariners and our local community partners. Beth Knox is pretty much the middle woman. And we're feeling pretty good about it. She's the president of the Seattle Sports Commission in charge of coordinating the efforts from the Mariners and the city. She was at last year's All-Star Experience to prepare for this moment. When we went to LA, we took the chief of police, the chief of fire, uh, the mayor came, our uh, friends that visit Seattle. All of these partners came to, uh, to learn together. She says the goal is simple. To do better, to learn from the prior experiences uh, and then find ways that you can improve upon that. A tall task after LA hosted the most attended All-Star events in 14 years and broke the merchandise sales record. Regular baseballs are $20. But Griggs is confident they can deliver. The opportunity to be a part of the event, whether you're inside the ballpark or just in the community, there's something for everyone. All right, man, let's go, let's get after it. Oh, jeez. Felix, I know you love to compete, but you just pitched yesterday. I'm um, Larry. Larry. Fernandez. Mariners baseball, ready to play. Who's the new lefty? Some guy named Jerry. The A's are in full rebuild mode. They're coming off their first 100 loss season since 1979 and look like they'll lose 100 more. They've moved big ticket players for prospects and are in limbo as to where the franchise will end up in the future. Offensively, they brought in Jace Peterson and Aledmus Diaz and are excited to see if top catching prospect Shea Langoliers will blossom. 
If there is a strength, it'll be the pitching. Paul Blackburn was Oakland's all-star rep last year, but Ken Waldachuk will have to do the heavy lifting. Drew Wasinski has pitched well in Korea the past four seasons, and it'll be interesting to see what Shintaro Fujinami brings after 10 seasons in Japan. We understand that we have um, a young, you know, for the most part, inexperienced roster at the major league level, but these guys are all here because they have major league talent. When that talent matures, we've seen that in this organization in years past. Our job is to, to get it ready to go compete and win baseball games. Before each season begins, the Mariners serve samples of the new foods coming to the ballpark. Evening's Kim Holcomb looks at the new offerings this season. Paul, you know how I feel about food, and while it may not be the reason to come to a game, it is a reason, especially given what's on the menu this season. Suffice to say, Mariners fans have gotten used to eating well. What is new for them this year that they can look forward to? Oh my God, what can I tell you? It is so many things that we have this year available. I mean, we have new comers. Uh, we have Moro Pizza. They have new comers this year. And they cr actually created a specific pizza just for the city. Absolutely. They have a completely brand new concept. I mean, you cannot have it out of here. Uh, let's start by marination. They have a Lua concept that is amazing. We have Din Tan Fun with our Chinese or Asian concept. They have like a salt and pepper popcorn chicken that I tried and it's, I'm telling you, I will be there pretty, pretty much like twice a day. <laughs> we have some salt and straw ice cream as well. It's spicy chicken sandwich and we have our blown your mind away sauce that go with the chicken sandwich, that is great. And then we have a shrimp quesadilla and brisket quesadilla with chipotle crema, pico de gallo, pineapple on it. Instead of being open, we fold it. You now where the people can have the quesadilla, order it and start walking to the seats, eating the quesadilla. They don't even have to wait for that. Okay, and you don't have chicken wings, you have pork wings. Or wings. Does that mean that pigs have wings that I was unaware of? Let's leave it up for the people to like think about it. So in summary, if you want to try all of the food, you're gonna have to come to more than one game. You need to come at least, I would say, at least 25 to 30 games just to make sure that you can try at least one item from that thing. There you go, you have permission from Chef, 25 to 30 games minimum. minimum. I would say minimum 25 games. Mm -mm, that looks like some good eating. Well, the Mariners have all-stars in the lineup, a Cy Young pitcher in the rotation and a gold glover on defense, but fittingly, we will close the show with what some would say is one of the biggest reasons for their success, the bullpen. Over the past two seasons, the Mariners' bullpen has been one of the best in baseball, leading the majors in one-run victories. This season, Andres Munoz, Matt Brash, Diego Castillo, and Paul Sewald lead another talented pen. We know we are really good. We just have to maintain the same mentality over there and go and attack the hitters. I just think our philosophy of throwing strikes and, and just the good group that we have kind of brings out the best in everybody. I think that's something that we do really well. Former starter Matt Brash was a weapon out of the pen last season. In his final 37 games, he pitched 35 scoreless innings. I really like the bullpen. It, it was obviously new to me. I would always started my whole life, so took a little getting used to down in AAA, and then when I got called back up, I got very comfortable in my role. and. Yeah, it, it's super exciting to come to the ballpark every day and like have a chance to be in the game. While Brash and Munoz can bring the heat and nasty sliders, the M's also have Penn Murphy, yeah, exactly. who gives hitters a totally different look with his submarine style. I think just having more more toys to play with, it, it just kind of allows the the coaching staff to formulate different game plans. Bullpen is like a little mini community with, and with all your best friends. Yeah, we enjoy playing with each other. We play, we enjoy working with each other, which is. You can't manufacture that. I, I love going to the ballpark and being like, I could impact this game today. And that, it's really cool. The one, two, swing and a miss. And that'll do it. A lot to consider as we head into Thursday night's opener. For Chris Egan, Jake Garcia, and Kim Holcomb, I'm Paul Sylvie. As the Mariners look to build off last season and hope for a sequel in Seattle. Thanks for joining us. Good night. About 30 feet off the line. Nick to Kelman swing on high drive. Center field. Just gonna watch that baby get out of here over the batter's eye. JK Jared Kelnick with a home run. Watch the ball game. Pitch. 3-2. Swing and a miss at a fastball for strike three.
And the next off for the way, swinging a fly ball into the gap in the right center field. Julio on the run, reaches out, and he makes the catch. First pitch on the right-hander, swung on, hit down the third base, diving his Zeno to his left, gets up, gathers, throws, got him, nice play. Pretty good standing, 2-0. Here's a drive center field. Oh, baby, carry, carry, 